Okay, so this video is all about training the archway. Now, the archway is a precursor to obstacles like the curtain, but it's also a bit of a squeeze. It's great for um, building horses' confidence about going under anything low. So it's great for things like um, practice going into stables, loading practice, loading preparation exercises, that kind of thing, as well as just building general confidence, body awareness about the kind of gaps they can squeeze through and things like that. So, beginning here with Rowan, and um, she's always been very anxious about squeezing through things or going under things since she arrived. Um, she's had a big, always had a big panic about things touching her or being trapped due to her history. Um, so you can see at the beginning, I'm just encouraging her to explore it, to target it, target the archway and also to target my target. Now it was a pretty windy day when we started this, which isn't ideal. You can see the, the archway is blowing in the wind and that was making her a bit anxious too. So I'm just keeping my energy really low and soft. There actually I'm wiggling it just to show it's nothing to worry about. And uh, keeping again like, and softly can you touch, keeping everything really low and dropped and calm in my body and rewarding her for engaging and being able to touch the target. So you could absolutely introduce anything spooky on a, a calm day. That would be a really great idea. Um, but if you're working on a windy day, it's good to practice because the more you work on a windy day, the easier they find it and the more they get used to it. So you can see then that I just, um, again, it's that challenge sandwich idea. So we explored it a little bit and then walked off, walked around it. I didn't push it too much. We came back around and had a another go. And I'm using my handheld target here to encourage her to put her head like towards it. So the real big thing that they struggle with initially is getting going past the archway with their eye line. So putting their head under it. So I'm just using the handheld target to begin to get her to stretch her head under the archway and see that that's no big deal. And again, not very much repetition. And then we walk around it. She wanted to go back to it then, which was a good sign. And then over to her mat, which is a favourite behaviour. So we spent a bit of time in between these reps um, doing, you know, some scratches and some bits on the mat and things like that. Um, but I've just cut the, the bits where we're actually working on the archway. So we came back around again and you can see I'm just getting her to explore it again um, and target it. We also actually did it a few times the other way. Um, but you couldn't see because of her bottom, so I've just got these ones in. And you can see this time how she was just much more confident confident to come and stand with her head underneath it. Now, once they're at that point where they're kind of, it's under their neck, then they're usually happy to go through it. And I love that she walked calmly away from it. Sometimes they can get to that point and then rush through. Um, I didn't want her to force her to stop to try and get her to touch the target or anything where she might have felt anxious, but I liked that she was able just to walk calmly through it and away from it. So I ended that first session with the archway there with Rowan. Um, we obviously did a lot more practice with the archway in, in subsequent sessions, building up her confidence to go through it both directions um, and also for her to be able to stop and stand underneath it. Um, so although at the beginning I allowed her to walk through and it was a really nice way to help build her confidence, I want them to be able to build up to being able to stand under it and feel confident there too. Okay, so this is Khalil's go. Same thing, I'm just asking him to target. Now you saw with Rowan that she was in a head collar and lead rope and he isn't. I just wanted to show you a difference that you can use it in either equipment, but what's really important is that you're giving the horse choice and really paying attention to their emotional state. So you could see that I wasn't using the lead rope to um, insist with Rowan or to stop her leaving, you know, or even emotionally leaving, like turning her head away or something. It was exactly the same. So you can, it doesn't matter if you can't work them without a lead rope, you can do it with the same sensitivity to their emotional state. It's also good to work them in different equipment as well so that they are feel confident and relaxed whether the head collar's on or off. Now, you can see Khalil again was a bit wary. He's actually, again, it's a windy day. He's a spooky horse. Um, no point doing my de-spooking videos with the non-spooky ones. <laughs> so, um, And here he's got a stationary target. So whereas Rowan had her mat, which she loves, he has his stationary target. So we explored the hoop a few times, walked around it, and then came to his stationary target, again, breaking up that challenge. So here I actually asked him to walk around it um, with me again and he took himself to it and said hey can we play with this so I said okay fine <laughs> let's just go and work on the hoop on the archway that's what I want to work on and he's asked if we can so 
again doing the same thing I was doing with Rowan. If we're standing there, can he just touch my handheld target um, while putting his head under the archway? Do it a couple of times and they say, okay, now let's go around and come back the other way. Now, obviously, because of the position of the camera, I was wanting him to do it more facing this way as well. But obviously, when you're training, you can do it in both directions. So it looks to me like he was being spooky about that far end this session. Um, I can't remember what was going on at the time, but um, they often shoot over in that direction. That's where the moors are. So um, there could well have been something like that going on. Or he was just spooking at that corner. <laughs> Bit spooky. So again, with the spooking, I often do um, just really try and stay calm and keep my focus. I want to have a bigger focus uh, draw than they have. So there as he spooked, obviously I stopped him running into me, but then <sighs> breathe out, drop my energy, refocus back on the archway, and that immediately brings their attention back to that place as well. I'm also standing, making sure that I stand on the spooky side, just to make sure that A doesn't jump into me and also to give him a little bit more confidence that's another thing that I do a lot as well and again just using the handheld target to get him just to stretch down and under the archway now I don't think he's as anxious of the archway itself as Rowan and um, he doesn't have the same history with being trapped or um you know, Rowan had some not very nice um, experiences with humans and ropes and uh, pulling carts and things like that. So she's got quite a lot of history there, which he doesn't have. Um, but he's anxious, obviously more anxious about the wind, the general day, the fact that it's just a new exercise. So again, your horse can be a little bit different, but it's exactly the same process where we, once he's done a few nice ones with the archway, then we walk around and go do something really fun. So again, I've cut out the times that we spent scratching and cuddling and stuff at the stationary targets and just put in the kind of interesting bits at the archway or the relevant bits. And um, again, you can see my energy is really low. I'm also holding the target quite low and I'm looking for them just to drop the head and not just bash it and then brush their head back up, but to softly be able to keep his nose down. And because he was able to softly keep his nose down, I knew that he was ready to go that next step. And you could see with Khalil, whereas with Rowan, I was like, she's not gonna be able to stop. So once she took that step past her eye line, I just softly allowed her to walk out with it so she didn't feel trapped. Once he'd put his head under, he was like, ah, I'm actually fine with this. Um, and so again, you can kind of gauge that with your horse. So if you mark them for taking that step forwards and they stop like Khalil did, then by all means feed them. It's great. You really want them to be able to feel confident enough to stop under it and to stand underneath it and not just scoot through it but if you feel like with Rowan like I did with Rowan that if they take that step through they're gonna uh, feel a bit trapped at first then to begin with take that step through and just walk calmly out and repeat that until you feel like they're able to stop and stand under it which is exactly what I did with Rowan over subsequent sessions but here you can see that once Khalil makes that decision and he's like, oh, actually, I can fit through here. It's not a problem. He's very calm and happy about standing there. So this is where you want to get to, but it might take a few sessions with your horse, depending on their level of anxiety about the archway. That video was an excerpt from a video in the CT Club and you can see there the rest of Rowan and Khalil's process in becoming really confident with all stages of the curtain which was a really interesting process for both of them as they were spooky about different bits. Um, so yeah you can see all the stages until they were really confident and I mean to get to this point with Rowan was such an achievement because she was so worried about things wrapping around her hind legs and, and um, moving behind her. There's also variations like the recall through the curtain and moving into the hoop picking up speed that kind of thing as well so as I say those could be found in the CT club we have loads going on there including um, loads of home study courses where you can see the uh, training tutorial videos in full so you can follow all of the process process with those two. We've got loads going on in the despooking course and also the jumping and obstacle training because obstacles are so good for building um, body awareness um, as um, building fun and variety into your training for things like trek and horse agility but of course there's a huge despooking element as well and that was certainly the case for Rowan and Khalil so you can follow all of their um, progress on all of the different stages with the lumps and bumps along the way it was pretty interesting with those two as well as some variations to really build it up to have some fun with your horse.
If you want to find out more, then please head over to connectiontraining.com where you can find out more about myself and Rachel and you can sign up to the CT club there. We can't wait to see you online as part of the club. You can also find out more if you go to Amazon and search for Connection Training. You can find out more about our best-selling book and um, that has loads more about our philosophy and principles of training. really looks at the uh, science of emotions that um, underlies it and our whole ethos. Thank you for watching.